Hey Kriegers, Robo here and welcome back to part 2 of the Octobot King L3GS cosplay series. Last time we were able to make the arms, but for this episode we chose to start with a bit of a different part of the mech. We made the studio at the front of the suit together with the master himself, DJ Octavio, as a hand puppet that I can control from inside of the suit. So let's get started on the studio and then we will show you guys how we made this puppet. For the studio, we had a few big parts to cut out first. Starting with the floor and the table from this 6mm MDF sheet using a jigsaw. Then when we made the big selection of foam board pieces for the hands with the laser cutter, I also came prepared with the background dagger gun for the studio to have that one ready to attach to the floor. This background we had already combined with these 7 pieces of cardstock that we had also cut out with the laser to save some time. Look at all of those little pieces that we had to cut out with by hand. No thank you. But now we got the task to use some wood glue to attach the background to the floor and keep this in place while the glue dries. Luckily a leftover piece of angled aluminium made this possible. While that dried I started to assemble the table that will house all of DJ Octavio's equipment. Using some 100mm thick XPS foam for the two speaker boxes at both ends of the table, that will also later house the wasabi sticks. And then some 200mm square dowels to lift the table to the right height. These were then attached using both wood glue for the strongest bonds and some hot glue to hold them in place while also pre-drilling and driving a screw through the dowels from the other side of the table to make sure it's securely attached to the flooring. Speaking of the flooring, this is now dry, so we can start to work on the foam board sheet that I used for the final plates of the background. These we now need to cut the size, and then attach the wooden frame at the end of the plates to the floor. After which we can finish up the plates with a nice thick line of hot glue onto the seam between the plates and the floor. So with all of the parts for the base of the studio attached, we can remove the tape holding the parts and do a quick test if the table fits yet and... So we did get some snow here in the Netherlands, but it's more so with how much foam dust came loose from us sending back the speaker to be able to fit into the studio. But with a little bit of cutting with a box cutter and then sanding, this did work out pretty well in the end. So with the table done, this meant we could start to prepare some of the DJ equipment. Starting with these truncated cones, combined with these circles to make the turntables. With a little finger hole in the circle that we then close up again with some craft paper. After that we could attach the cones and send back the little leftover edge to get a flush result. on both of the turntables. Yeah. 
But what are turntables if they can't actually, well, turn? So we use these bearings that we attached using some pieces of wood at the bottom to get the turntables to be articulated. But before we can insert the table, we did have to make a few more holes that I need to cut out for some functions of the puppet. But once those are done, we can do some pre-drilling to be able to temporarily place the table down. Since I still want to keep the table separated for easier painting later. But we can still use the screws to test out the placement and have it temporarily fixed to the floor. Then we've got the final pieces for the table with the slider decals that are made from some craft paper. And then some 25 by 50 mm buttons that we made from some more 5 mm EVA foam. And all the while we've been doing all of this in the workshop, our 3D printer has been working hard at home for some more details. Like the speakers that we had also used for the Octobot King 2 diorama. These are perfect to be placed on the sides of the big XPS foam blocks to actually make them the speakers. And our 3D printer has also been really busy with all of these buttons and sliders that we can now finally glue down in place. And with the studio done so far, we can now focus on its driver. For DJ Octavio, I wanted to make him as a hand puppet that I can control from the inside of the suit to interact with people on the outside. So for this, I started with two layers of 100mm upholstery foam, with a hole in both of them for where my hand is going to be placed, gluing both sides down with a nice cut of contact cement. Then it was the art to mark out the big pieces of the body that we wanted to keep and which to remove. After which we got started to cut off the excess foam. Starting with some big pieces using a box cutter. And later on shifting to some scissors for some more smoother and refined work. Making use of a middle line to make sure that we know where the difference is of the front and the back. And so I don't get confused once I also add the final piece of the back of the head. Not only can we then add to this back of the head, but we can also add the bottoms of the tentacles using more contact cement. Also using it to attach the two crossing tentacles together, making sure the one with the opening fits nicely onto the other one. 
but leaving the tips open for easier patterning. And lastly, we've got the arms. At first we thought this would work nicely with the upholstery foam, but in the end we choose to cut these off from the body. Since we wanted to make the arms of Octavio controllable from the inside of the suit, but with this blue upholstery foam is way too sturdy to work for this. Maybe if we had some softer cream colored fabric this could have worked, but for now we will just leave it as it is with the arms filled using some plush stuffing. But at least the solid arms did help out with the patterning for all of the body parts of Octavio. By using our tried and true aluminium foil and masking tape method, we were able to make a nice pattern for all of the body, even marking out the pieces which need to be his red skin color and also which need to be a cream fabric for the insides of the tentacles. Since we can't just leave Octavio as a big blue block of foam, we do need to trace out these patterns using a rouge fabric to get a bit of a darker red matching his in-game model. Tracing the head and the different pieces for the fronts of the tentacles onto this fabric, or at least this kind of fabric. Since I first used this smooth fabric for the skin, but in the end I really did not like how thin it was, it also showed a lot of the imperfections in the foam, and on top of all of that, it also showed the seams a lot. So in the end, I choose to cut out the pieces again using a cotton fleece fabric for the rouge parts and some of my cream fleece fabric left over from our furry Arctarian plushie for the insides of the tentacles. This way, we did get more of a plushie feeling for DJ Octavio. Even still, I think this works way better than the whole smooth fabric stuff. When the patterns were cut out, we got the sewing. But for the head, we could not finish the complete seam along the head. Since the top of the head is a lot bulkier than the bottom, we needed to keep the back half open to be able to fold the fabric over the foam. And after this was done, we could then use a ladder stitch to close up the piece. This same stitch was then also used to add all of the smaller parts like the fabrics around the tentacles. These eyes that we made from some more upholstery foam, rouge and lime fabric as well. Even the arms with their stuffing were added using this stitch around their circumference. But we did need to cut off the back of the cross tentacles. Not because we did anything wrong. No, not at all. I wanted to add a little space between the cross tentacles and the opening in the head. Through this, I could then place my fingers into the tentacles to be able to move these whenever I talk as DJ Octavio inside of the cosplay. This will then give more detail to the fact that DJ Octavio is supposed to be the driver of the Mac, and also give more credence to the fact that DJ Octavio is talking with you. So, using more contact cements to glue the fabrics to the edges of the foam, then we got to do the same thing to the head, plus a hole where we needed to cut into the opening of the fingers that we already had on the inside. But we still have a few more details to make, like these upholstery foam filled suction cups. Even adding some thread through the fabric and the foam to make a more three dimensional look for the tops of the suction cups. Once those were all added, we get to stitch them to each of their tentacles. Finally, we can also make the scar for the crossed tentacles. So, to get this gradient right, I used my airbrush with some lime green miniature paints onto some white felt to get the look just right. Done!
Thus, with the paint added and the piece cut out from the sheet, we can sew it on top of the cross tentacles. Speaking of that, next we get to add the iris and the pupil to the DJ's eyes. Using a specific stitching technique to get a special pattern for the visible stitches on the eyes. And speaking of purple, we still need to add the gradients at the ends of DJ Octavio's tentacles. So, back to the airbrush we go! After that, I can remove the masking tape that I placed over the scar to keep the purple away from that. And with that final detail done for the cross tentacles, we can at last add it to the matching opening onto the rest of the puppet. Using hot glue around the opening, and later on also adding some stitches around the base of each tentacle for some extra support. But that was just for Octavio itself. To be able to finish the puppet, we still have two more things we need to make. Starting with his hat. Using a pattern from Pepper Cura, for which I made this custom 3D model, I was able to get all of the pieces that I now need to cut out from some 5mm EVA foam. Making sure I get all of the little seams for the sides of the cap. After which I can start to assemble the two halves. And after all of these were assembled, I can then add the top of the cap to the sides to finish up the base. After that, we can then also add the back to the cap. Pulling this foam very tightly to make sure the back naturally curves, so that we can then abuse this for the shape of the hat. Then a heat gun is used for the front of the flaps, making sure these face up vertically. And next, we can then add the brim of the cap. Also adding a little bit of a bow with how I glued the piece onto the hat to give it a bit more of a curve at the end. And lastly we add the final layer of the back to finish up the base. All the while we also added some 15mm white strips of foam as details to the hat before painting. Starting with a layer of white plastic dip, followed up with a layer of a light sandy brown and finishing up with a coat of a darker sandy brown spray paint. After that, my first task was to remove the holder that I used during painting. But since this was starting to get a risk of actually tearing the foam, I opted to just leave it for now and first focus on the masking tape around the hat. I don't know how well it shows, but the subtle difference between the colors seems to match the reference really well, so I'm quite happy about that. After all of the tape was removed, I actually got the idea to try and melt the hot glue holding the post in place, and fortunately, this seemed to be successful. With the colors a success, and the post removed, we can finally add this 3D printed mount that I had designed for the hat. This was inspired by the mount that DJ Octavio actually uses in game for some sort of a GoPro. So this made it very easy to adapt this piece into a design that I can then use to house a Logitech webcam. Since this is going to be my way of looking out from inside of the cosplay. Bebo. Indeed! By wiring this back to an old phone that I have mounted to the back of the studio, I will be able to see ahead of myself while I walk around the con floor. After that, I can use a safety pin to pin through the foam to mark out where the holes of the mount lie. After that, I can glue some small pieces of wood to the inside of the hat, 
And with a little bit of extra support from some more hot glue on the insides of the deep holes, I can then screw through the foam and attach the mount to the head. This was then repeated for the bottom holes, although because this will be visible on the underside, I opted not to add the wood to the back and instead I ground the screws back a bit. And while these were still hot from the grinding, I was able to press them into the hot glue and lastly use the drill to screw them into the foam a bit. But not all the way through. Then I added some markings to both sides of the head, since these also appear in game. Although I don't know what these actually are. Maybe there are kill marks that you see on fighter jets, like how many agents Octavio has already defeated, although that's probably not likely. Or they could just be some big stitches from some fixes that Octavio had to do to his head. And lastly, I wanted to add this tightening belt to the back of the head. Totally not functional, but when I added the hat to the puppets, everything was already nice and tight, so we don't even need this part. And so I glued the clasp to the back, and the ends of the belt were pushed through some slits in the foam for the best effect. And I also added the webcam to the mount to see the finished hat. And that will just fix itself once I add it to the puppet. But first, I need to add a few more details like these fake rivets that I press into the foam using a circle punch. But for now, we've got some final pieces to make with these wasabi sticks that I made from some XPS foam. Although for this video we were not able to record much of the making of the wasabi sticks, and especially the detailed painting. So in return, we will show you guys the process that we used for the wasabi sticks in a short coming very soon after we finish this video. So, we hope you will look out for that! But with the lime cream primer added to the wasabi sticks, and the rest of the gradients added off camera, we also have these metal rods with handles that we use as the way we're going to control Octavio's arms from inside of the cosplay. Having glued the metal rod to the inside of the wooden handles with super glue, I also wanted to add a little bit of a finish to the rods. Just because most Splatoon projects don't actually require much visible wood grain for most of the time. And thus, with the stain dry and the wasabi sticks added, we get to hot glue the ends of the metal rods inside of the XPS foam wasabi sticks, with the glue on the inside and a little seal around the entrance point. But I did not just add the rods all willy-nilly in there. I also used my metal cutters to add little grooves to the wire, giving it more grip when the hot glue expands and hardens inside of the foam. And so we finally get to hot glue the wasabi sticks to the hands of DJ Octavio, and with that, and the addition of the hat, and the safety glasses. We can finally close off the second part of the Octobot King L3GS cosplay with the completion of the DJ Studio and DJ Octavio himself.
Hey Kurigius, Robo here, and we hope you enjoyed this latest episode in the Octobot King L3GS cosplay project. As some of you guys might have noticed, we still have a few more things that need to happen before the DJ Studio would be officially finished. Stuff like the priming and painting of the floors and table, the addition of the chrome silver coating to the background, adding the diffuser plexiglass panels and the lights, and those 12 wasabi sticks. But since most of these include or actually require that the parts are painted first, we are going to be saving the final assembly of this for the last episode of the series where we're going to be painting all of the parts of the Octobot when we've got everything ready to go. But before you guys go, we also have a poll that will be posted right after this video went live. Since we get it, if you guys would like to see something else other than all these half finished pieces for such a big project. That's why we will include a poll, so you guys can decide if you actually want to see the rest of the cosplay series, or if you guys want to see something else first, and then we will continue after maybe a few episodes. So, that's going to be all from us for now. We hope you have a very fun Christmas, and we will see you guys in the next video. Keep those creative gears turning, and happy holidays!